Hey, in this tutorial we're looking at section 7.3 on applications of differentiation. So some of our applications include finding tangents and normals, uh, finding rates of change, uh, solving uh, maximum and minimum problems, curve sketching, related rate problems and kinematics. Okay, just have a little bit of information over on this side as well. So a tangent is a line whose gradient is the same as the curve at the single point they touch. Okay, so we only talk about tangents uh, touching a part of the graph. Okay, and a normal is a line that's perpendicular to a tangent. So our equation of a tangent is y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1, where m is the gradient of the curve at our point x1, y1. Okay, and that's the same as the um, gradient of the curve at the point x1, y1. Okay, so that's how we can do a link there. Our the equation of our normal is very similar, that we're y minus y1 over, uh, sorry, equals minus 1 over m outside of x minus x1, where m, this is the same value of m here. So this is a gradient of our curve at the point x1, y1. So we need three things for these problems. The gradient at our point x1 and y1. So obviously we need our point x1 and y1 as well. Okay, so look, we've got a few worked examples that we'll have a crack at, right, and see how we go. Okay, so worked example seven is find the equation uh, of the tangent and the normal to the curve y equals minus x squared plus 3x plus 4 at x equals 3. Okay, so straight away they actually tell us what x1 equals, that's 3. Okay, from that we can work out what our y1 is equal to, and we can do that by simply subbing x1 in back into our equation here. So we can say y1 equals our min sorry, minus 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 4. That's y1 equals minus 9 plus 9 plus 4. Okay, so y1 is going to equal 4. Okay, so we've got two of our points now. We've got our x1 and our y1. We now need to find our gradient. So in order to do that, we first need to find dy dx, okay, which is going to be minus 2x okay, plus 3 okay, and we sub x equals 3 into dy dx okay because we need the gradient at our point um, x1 y1 so we need to sub our point x1 equals 3 back into this equation so we can say then that our m is going to equal minus 2 times 3 plus 3 so m is going to equal, we've got minus 6 plus 3 gives us minus 3. So now we have everything that we need. We have our x1 value here. We have our y1. We have our m. Okay, now we can use these two equations. So I'll say, well, we'll do our tangent first. So I'll say y minus y1, which is 4, equals m, which is minus 3, outside of x minus x1, which is 3. We expand our brackets we hit minus 3x plus 9 so y equals minus 3x plus 13. Hey, okay, you should always put in the form y equals mx plus c. Right, now for our normal hey, again we just sub our values into our equation so we say y minus 4 equals minus 1 over 3 so I did x minus 3 Okay, so you get y minus 4 equals negative x on 3 plus 1. Okay, with our negative third times our negative 3. So y equals minus x on 3 plus 5. Okay, would be our equation of the normal. Okay, so we'll keep moving on and have a look at some other worked examples here. So we're looking at worked example 9 and 10. Okay, so we're to get example 9. The tangent to the curve y equals the square root of x at a point is given by uh, 6y take x plus c. Find the value of c. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to rearrange a little bit. Okay, so what we can do is we can say, well, we've got 6y take x equals minus c or 6y equals x take 6, uh, sorry, take c, that's our c value. Okay, so y equals x on 6 minus c on 6. Okay, 
So from that, we can also say that we've got our 1 on 6 x minus c, and think of it like that. Okay, so from there, we can see straight away what our m value has to be. Okay, so we can see that our m equals our 1 on 6, okay, because we're the tangent, so we're saying m is 1 on 6, okay, and we're saying that, well, x1 has to equal some c value, which we don't know yet. Okay, so what we want to do okay, is we also want to find uh, the derivative of our curve here. Okay, so we can say, well, y equals x to the power of a half. Okay, so we can say dy dx is going to equal a half x to the negative a half, or dy dx is going to equal sorry, to negative a half, it's going to equal 1 over 2 root x. Okay, so we can say that's our derivative there. Okay, so we know that when we put in our, well, sorry, that when we look here, okay, we know that at the point where our derivative and our tangent are equal to each other, okay, then our um, gradients are going to be the same. So we, what we can say basically is our 1 over 2 root x, okay, well that's going to equal our 6. Okay, so we can work out what our x value has to be. Okay, so when we do that we can say, well, we can go 1 over root x, when times by 2 and make it 1 over 3. Okay, and then what we can say is we can say, well, from that, we can flip it and say, well, root x equals 3, so x equals 9. Okay, so we now know what our um, x value equals to. What we can do now is sub that into here and get our y1, so we can call that our x1. Get our y1, we'll do that over here, and say, well, that's the square root of our 9. Okay, so we know that y1 equals 3. Okay, so we're getting there. Okay, so we now know what our y1 is. We now know what our x1 is. Okay, and we know what our gradient is here. So we can sub that into our tangent formula and say, well, y minus y1 is y minus 3 equals our m, which is 1 on 6, okay, outside of our x minus x1, which is 9. Get y minus 3 equals our 1 on 6. So 1 on 6x minus 9 on 6. Okay, so y minus 3 equals 1 on 6x okay, minus 3 on 2. So y minus 3. So our y equals our 1 on 6. Uh, we're minus 3, we're going to add minus 1.5 and, and we're going to add on our 3 here. So it'll give us plus 3 on 2. Okay, oh, sorry, we've got my x in there. Now we want to be in this form here. So what we want to do is we want to times everything by 6. So we say 6y equals x plus 9. Because we times this by 3, make it 18 on 2, which is 9. Okay, so rearrange so we get in the form here. Okay, and we say, well, 6y take x take 9 equals 0. Okay, therefore, our c equals minus 9. Okay, so getting in the form there, we're able to find that our c is equal to negative 9. Okay, so we'll look at worked example 10. We've got to find the equation of the tangent and normal to the curve y equals 4 cos of 2x uh, at x equals 8. Okay, so we know our x1 value, that is pi on 8. Okay, what we can do now is we can sub our pi on 8 into here to get our y1 value. We get y1 equals 4 cos of 2 pi on 8, or y1 equals 4 cos of pi on 4. Okay, that gives us Sorry, 2 root 2. Okay, when we do our exact value, it times it by 4. Okay, so now we've got our y1 value. What we need now is, well, we're going to find our m value. So we need to take our derivative of this. 
Okay, so we need to go dy dx. Okay, well we're going to bring our 2 out the front. Cos goes to negative sine. 2 times 4 is 8, so we have negative 8 sine of 2x. Okay, and then what we need to do is find our m value, and that's minus 8 sine of 2 uh, pi on 8, or m equals minus 8 sine of pi on 4. So m is going to equal uh, my, our minus 4 root 2. Okay, so now we have everything that we need, okay, uh, and so we can build up our equation for our tangents and our normal. Okay, so we'll start off with our tangent. Okay, so we get y minus our y1, which is 2 root 2, equals our m, which is minus 4 root 2, outside of x, take our x1, which is pi on 8. So you see this one isn't going to be nearly as nice as some of our other ones, unfortunately. Okay, uh, but when we do this, we can keep working through and say y minus 2 root 2 equals nd4 root 2x plus 4 root 2 pi on 8. Okay, well we get y minus, so we'll just say y equals here, our minus 4 root 2x okay, plus where our 4 and our 8 cancel out to make it root 2 on 2 pi plus 2 root 2. Okay, so it's certainly not a, a very nice looking one that one compared to some of the others, but it still works nonetheless. And we can do our normal as well. Okay, so this time we have y minus our y1 okay, of our 2 root 2 equals our negative 1 over our m value of negative 4 root 2 x minus x1 of pi on 8. Okay, so we say we'll get y minus 2 root 2. Okay, equal our negatives will cancel out here. We'll leave us with x on 4 root 2. Okay, and then, as I said, our negatives cancelled out there, so that's a positive. Uh, which will make it take pi on 32 root 2. Okay, so we say y equals our x over 4 root 2. Take pi over 32 root 2 plus 2 root 2. Okay, it certainly doesn't look very nice. Okay, uh, what we can do though is when, if we rationalise our denominators on these, Okay, what we get to is y equals root 2x on 8, take root 2 pi over 64, plus our 2 root 2, okay, by rationalising our denominators. Okay, so we've got one more worked example, okay, and this is more of an application one than some of our other ones, okay, and that's uh, talking about tides at certain uh, at uh, a certain bay can be modelled by a given equation. So this is uh, probably pretty similar to some application questions that you've seen in the past, but because now we're talking about differentiation, there's an extra step involved. Okay, uh, there's only one other thing that we just need to talk about quickly. That's average rates of change, and that's simply our rise over run formula. Okay, so it's just one thing that we need to remember that our average rate of change. I forgot to put it at the start. Average rate of change. Okay, is equal to our rise over our run, which equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, or you can write it as um, f of x2 minus f of x1 over our x2 take x1. Okay, so just need to remember that the average rate of change is simply our rise over run. Okay, so it's a gradient of a, of a line that joins two points. Okay, so we'll get cracking on this last worked example. Okay, so we've got an equation d of t, okay, which is the uh, going to be talking about our depth of water. Okay, is equal to nine plus three sine of pi t on six. Okay, so we're talking about D is the depth of water in metres. 
and T is the time in hours after midnight on a particular day. So T is in hours after midnight. Okay, what is the depth of the water of the bay at uh, 2 a.m.? Well, 2 a.m. is two hours after midnight, so all we're looking for there is D of 2, okay, which is 9 plus 3 sine of pi times 2 on 6. Okay, so D of 2 equal to 9 plus 3. So this will be um, sine of pi on 3 which we know is root 3 on 2. Okay, and because it's a, it's a worded one, uh, this time we can um, just do it in decimals. Okay, it doesn't tell us, uh, but often with our application questions, we're, we're talking about decimals with these. So when we do do that, we get that it's 11.598 metres. Okay. Uh, part B is sketch the graph of dt against t for um, a full day, so from 0 to 24. Okay. So when we do that, we look at this. Okay. So I'll just switch off that for a second. When we see that we've got an amplitude that's equal to 3, okay. our period equals 2 pi on n. Okay, n in this case is pi on 6, so we say our period is equal to 2 pi on pi on 6, okay, which equals 12. Okay, so we're only going to get two full cycles in this over our 24 hour period or time frame. Okay, and we've been obviously translated 9 vertically. So when we graph that, okay, my graph's not going to be great. We've got 12, we've got 24, okay, we have 9 is our midpoint, okay, uh, we're going to go up by 3 uh, to 12 and down by 3 to 6, okay, because of our amplitude of 3, okay, so it's a sine function, it's positive, so we're going to start at our midpoint and we're going to go up first, we're going to come up, down, then back to the middle by 12, and then we're going to go another full cycle again and get back at 24. So we need to look something like that with uh, T here and our D there. Okay, so that's part B. Uh, part C is find when the depth of the water is below 7.5 metres. So you could think 7.5 metres is here. So we track through, and we track through. We're going to get you know, a range of values in here and in here. Okay, so what we're going to do then is actually set our depth to 7.5 metres. So 7.5 equals 9 plus 3 sine of pi t on 6. Okay, so uh, we rearrange a little bit there. Okay, and we can say uh, that we can take away our 9 give us minus one and a half, and then we can divide by a three. Okay, so rearranging, we get that uh, sine of pi t on six is equal to negative a half. Okay. So our basic angle for that, uh, for equally negative a half, our basic angle is equal to pi on six. Okay, our domain was from zeros less than t is less than 24. Okay, well we need to times that by our n value here. Okay, or our, um, our change in our period. Okay, so we can times this by that. So zero times that will be zero. Less than t, less than 24 pi on six. Okay, and we see that's gonna be uh, 4 pi, okay, so we're going to be doing two full rotations of our unit circle, and we knew that anyway, okay, because we can see here we're going to do two full rotations, okay, so we know our basic angle is there, sine uh, is negative in the third and fourth quadrants, okay, we know sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants, going by our unit circle of cast, so when we say that our sine of pi 
so no, sorry, I'm going to say our pi t on 6 is equal to, well in the third quadrant uh, we are pi plus pi on 6 which will give us 7 pi on 6 in the fourth quadrant we're 2 pi minus pi on 6 which will give us 11 pi on 6 okay but then we also need to go around a second time so we're going to do our 7 pi on 6 plus 2 pi we're going to do our 11 pi on 6 plus 2 pi okay so we've got our pi on 6 t 7 pi on 6 11 pi on 6 okay uh, we think of this as uh, 12 pi on 6 okay so that's going to be 19 pi on 6 and 23 pi on 6 if we times by 6 all our 6's are going to cancel out if we divide by pi all our pi's are going to cancel out so quite nicely t equals 7 11 19 and 23 okay so we can say that the depth uh, now we wanted uh, find that when the depth of water is below seven and a half meters so the depth of water is below 7.5 meters when T is an element of 7 to 11 union 19 to 23 okay uh, our next part is talking about um, our rate of change so we want to find the rate of change of depth of the water at 2 a.m. okay to find our rate of change of depth we need our derivative okay so we're going to need our derivative of this function here okay so we need d dash t okay, is going to equal, well our 9's going to disappear sine goes to cos we're going to bring our pi on 6 out the front times our 3, so I think we've got 3 pi on 6 cos of pi t on 6 okay, well we can say d dash of t our 3 on 6 is the same as a half so we can say we've got pi on 2 cos of pi t on 6 okay, and we want to know the rate change at 2 in the morning so that's 2 hours after midnight so it's d dash of 2 so it's pi on 2 cos of pi times 2 on 6 because pi on 2 outside of cos of pi on 3 okay, so when we get that we find that the uh, rate of change at our pi on 2 is pi on 4 okay, meters per hour because okay, our cos of pi on 3 is a half okay, times our pi on 2 gives us pi on 4 meters per hour because remember our depth is measured in meters and our time is measured in hours so it's meters per hour is our rate of change okay. And the last part is over the first four hours, find the average rate of change of the depth okay, over the first four hours. Okay, um, so the good thing here is we can say, well, if we look at our graph for a start, okay, well, we know we start here at the point zero nine. That helps. Okay, we need to find our other point though, which is at uh, four. So we need to find d. Of four, okay, which is going to be nine plus three sine of pi times four on six. So our d of four equals nine plus three sine of two pi on three. Okay, right, when we do that, uh, we get that nine plus three root 3 on 2 okay so now what we can do is we can use our average rate of change which is our rise over our run so what we can do is whichever way we want to write it okay we can say well y2 that's um, going to be this one because it's furthest to the left so it's going to be 9 plus 3 root 3 on 2 minus our original one of 9 sorry that divide signs only under here 
okay, over our 4 minus 0. Okay, so our 9s are going to cancel out, and so we've got 3 root 3 on 2 on 4. Okay, so when we do that, uh, and sorry, two seconds. Oh yeah, sorry, when we do that, uh, we're just going to get our 3 root 3 on 8 okay, metres per hour. Okay, so hopefully uh, this section hasn't been too horrible, horrible for you. It's, um, it's just some application questions. We should have seen some um, normal and tangent questions before. We should have seen some questions like this before as well. The only bit that really would have been new is the, the last couple of parts. This type of um, question with our, um, our values at certain times or our graphs or things like that or the times when it's below or above a certain value, that shouldn't be new. We should have seen questions like that already. The only thing that we're adding now is obviously these rates of change questions. So hopefully that's enough to get you through for this section.